Hello and welcome to the Indian Classical Guitar Academy. My name is Jack Jennings and today I'm going to tell the story in a short form of how I became an Indian classical musician or an Indian classical guitar player, you could say. I have actually talked about this in other videos in a bit more depth, but today I'm just going to stick to the, the main different turns in the road that led to this place that I am now, teaching Indian classical music and playing with different Indian classical musicians. Just to let you guys know, there's a special offer going where you can become a member of the Indian Classical Guitar Academy and subscribe monthly, but you'll save money every single month that you subscribe. That offer is ending 1st of November. I've just put one more day onto that offer to give people more of a chance to pick up on it. So check out that if you'd like to find out about actually playing Indian classical music on the guitar, and I can certainly help you do that. So first of all, just to address how did I even discover this music? How did I just find out about it and decide that I wanted to learn about it in the first place? And for me, there's three artists that really represent the transition from being a guitar player to wanting to do Indian music. And first of all, I was into Jimi Hendrix. And then through Jimi Hendrix, I found out about John McLaughlin and then through John McLaughlin, I found out about Indian classical music, the work that he was doing with Indian classical musicians in his group Shakti, and particularly Ravi Shankar, and that was really the first artist that I fell in love with from the Indian classical form. And also, I was lucky that my mother is actually an Iyengar yoga teacher, so when I was young, she would travel off to India, and I would just get these stories and postcards uh, of you know what it was like in India so it always really you know held a special place in my imagination and she brought back a tape and a CD for me when I was about uh, 16 17 it was a tape of Ravi Shankar and it was a CD of Zakir Hussain and Zakir Hussain had a few different artists on that it was just a compilation but I knew straight away that this was just incredible music and I was very very deep into Jimi Hendrix and I loved his experimental, visceral but very lyrical experimental style of lead playing. So the music of Ravi Shankar, that sitar playing, just sounded like it was a logical extension of what Jimi Hendrix was doing, at least to my ears that's what it sounded like. It sounded like imagine if Jimi Hendrix just kept developing what he was doing and pushing it further and further you know, maybe you'd end up with something that sounded like Indian classical music when he's getting into those extended guitar solos and all of that. So that's how I really discovered the music. And then I was very, very fortunate to actually find a sitar teacher in my hometown of Bristol. And his name was Donov Sanfe. He's sadly passed on now, but he was an incredible teacher. And he really took me into a very traditional methodical approach to playing the sitar and he studied with Amanath Mishra who was a great sitar player in Varanasi. He was a professor at the University of Benares in Varanasi. So I learned a very traditional style of sitar playing and that was really really to do with all the nuances and the delicate details of how to phrase and how to really take your time with the music. And that was pretty good for me because at that age of 19, I was, I just wanted to go crazy and just play fast as I could. So it was great to actually have someone to slow you down and to try to put a lot of weight and kind of um, passion into the phrases, but in a very, um, a very sort of deep, more mature perhaps way of playing. Leading on from there, I started working with a Carnatic vocalist. Carnatic is the South Indian style of classical music, and that was also in my hometown of Bristol, so I was very lucky to come in touch with a great singer called Padma Ramanam. And she actually encouraged me to focus on the electric guitar. She heard me playing sitar, but then I also, I, I had a few different instruments. I had the sitar, I had a fretless guitar, and I had the electric guitar. So I played her all my instruments. And to my surprise, she said, well, actually, for this Carnatic repertoire, you should play the electric guitar. So she would teach me what she was doing. She would sing, and then I had to imitate that on the guitar. And she really helped me to help to 
vocalize on, on the guitar and to really find all the different techniques that could work. Of course, she didn't tell me literally what to do on the guitar in terms of techniques, but she would sing to me and she would describe, um, she would draw my attention to the construction of the phrase and how it was really, how to listen correctly to the phrase so I could try to recreate it on the guitar. And I just had to be creative about my use of bends, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs. And so that helped me to actually readdress the guitar and play it in more of a traditional Carnatic way. But that then led on to me trying to take the sitar style of playing and then try to re-engineer the sitar method on the guitar. So Padma really helped me in, in the Carnatic style to really focus on the electric guitar again. But then I had a lot more work to do thinking about the sitar and then trying to really fully integrate that into the electric guitar. So these different stages were really important to me. And then I had a, a few years of just trying to kind of put all of this together in my own practice. And then it was really put to the test when I was lucky enough to play with Manish Pingle, who's an Indian slide guitarist, and Gudeyan Gryat, who's a wonderful tabla player. So the story here is I might tell the story another time of how I met them and how I actually kind of got to play with them. But basically it gave me an opportunity to really try out what I was doing and see if it would hold up and if I could actually keep up with these incredible Indian classical musicians playing, you know, a million miles an hour and playing, you know, and trying to really fit into the proper cohesive environment of a proper recital concert and really fulfill the full role of really being an Indian classical musician on stage. So that was a very interesting process and once I had the first concert with them it, w it went pretty well um, but I knew that I needed more help. So I asked Gurdain, the tabla player, I asked him if he could put me in touch with Rupa Panesar. So Rupa Panesar is an amazing sitar player based in the UK. We're very lucky to have a sitar player of that um, prestigious level really in the UK because there's not many in the UK who are at that very high level who really have a full understanding of the music and can fully um, tackle all of the different aspects of that repertoire. It's actually quite rare to find musicians who are fully versed in this whole style of playing. So Gordain put me in touch with her and then I began a process of driving all the way up to her house. She lived three hours away from me but I would drive up there and we would sit for two or three hours at a time and, and, and I would study under her and really try to adapt what she was doing to to the guitar but because I understood the sitar I could watch her playing and I could understand what she was doing um, and things that I didn't understand she could explain to me and then I really started to think about the guitar almost just as if it was a sitar and really try to focus all of my energy on that and at this point um, I really stopped thinking about Western music almost entirely. I and stop thinking about even just regular guitar playing, playing different scale shapes and all of that. I did still do that because I had guitar students, but I really focused on just a purely sitar orientated way of playing. And when I managed to fully, um, well, I say fully, because I shouldn't say fully, because there's always more and more work to do. But once I, um, to some level, managed to really integrate what Rupert was teaching me, then I went back into doing more concerts with Manesh and Gurdain and they noticed a massive change and in less than a year they could see that my whole approach had really evolved and it was really great to get that feedback from them and I also in myself felt much more comfortable and felt that I had found my place within, within the music. And leading on from there um, Rupa introduced me to Shakir Khan, and Shakir Khan is an incredible sitar player. He's the son of Shahid Pravez. So she introduced me to Shakir and started having lessons with him, and I was still having lessons with Rupa at the same time. So that gave me a lot of work to really move through, a lot of different things to assimilate, because Shakir was really 
taking me into the very dense, complex, rhythmic aspect of Indian classical music. Um, and the, the style of his, his music and his father's music is very rhythmically rich and complex. So that was a, a, real, um, a real game changer to get a lot of insight into those aspects of the music and keep trying to integrate those into the guitar. And at this stage, I really felt that I had a good understanding of Indian classical music and how it related to, to the guitar. And I had a sense that there was, there was a complete system of, of guitar playing that had emerged through that whole process. So then I started making the guitar courses. I made my first guitar course, Essential Techniques for Indian Guitar, and that really addressed all of the core areas of the music and the, the main different pillars that you needed to understand and integrate into your guitar playing in order to really explore this music. And from there, I, I just, I was on a roll, really. I started to make more and more courses. I started to make new courses every month exploring different rags, exploring different areas of the music. Each course would tackle a slightly different method of improvisation or different approach to um, practice, understanding the theoretical side of the music. And now there's just, there's just tons of courses and there's more coming every month. I'm, I'm really enjoying just the continuous um, development of, of this repertoire. And you can become a part of the Indian Classical Guitar Academy to access all of these courses. So that's the offer that's going on at the moment. You can access every course I make and new courses every month. And you can subscribe monthly to get hold of all of this. And at the moment, there's still a special offer going where you can subscribe but pay less each month. And that will be maintained for the entire duration of your membership. And once the offer finishes, then basically the, the cost of monthly membership will, will, will be higher. So that's something that if you want to get hold of this material and you want to begin this journey, it's a really good time to start now because in the long run you're going to save a lot of money, to be honest. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, the story and where it's kind of resulted in all of these different guitar courses that I've been able to make with the help and the guidance of my gurus. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. If you want to start one of these courses, you can buy them individually or you can subscribe monthly to access all of them. For subscribers, there'll be new content every month, including live streams where we can answer your personal questions and go into more detail about applying this material. So far, we've covered Rag Yaman, Rag Bageshri, Jog, Hamsadwani, Kathy, and Rag Malkons, and there's much more to come. This body of work is a culmination of the 18 years experience I have as a guitar teacher, combined with the knowledge acquired through studying the sitar directly, and then adapting that material using the guitar techniques that suit this style best. To create these courses and gather the most authentic material possible, I work closely with other Indian classical musicians, such as Manish Pingle and Gurdang Riot. I'd like to give a special thanks to my guru Rupa Panesar, who has guided me in the creation of these courses. Much of the material has been adapted directly from my training with her. Also Shakya Khan, my guru, who's been inspiring me immensely and continues to shape how I approach the instrument and this incredible world of Indian classical music. So come and join us at the Indian Classical Guitar Academy to start this journey. The first 50 subscribers will get a reduced price every month for the whole duration of their membership. So come and be one of the first guitar players to realize what it means to be an Indian classical musician.